All right. Uh, I'm going to say good morning uh, to you guys because hopefully when you watch this and see this video of Sunday School Lesson, it will be in the morning. And uh, uh, you'll have uh, uh, two or three to look at. you got Brother Bill's Sunday School class if you want to uh, look at that one. You'll have this one here of the Upper Bound uh, Sunday School class. And, and I want to, uh, uh, you know, just thank uh, uh, the church and, and how the things have been handled. Uh, the way we'll be able to come up here and still get the gospel and still get our lessons out to a church member because we need to be able to uh, convert with our church members still as things are going on. I know everybody's at home and different things like that, but we still need to converse and we still need to communicate uh, with our church members. And I hope that uh, through this time of period and when this goes on that some of our church members don't get the... Uh, uh, the habit of not coming to church through all this and when we do be able to open up and we will we will be able to get back in God's house and be able to worship Him together again uh, when that might be it could be a little while or it could be short who knows but we need to keep in touch with each other through doing this and I'm uh, very grateful to be able uh, to stand before you all today and, and to do this and hope that uh, what has been brought today will uh, touch your heart and will be uh, something that we can, uh, uh, you know, just, just rely on through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to start, last week we were in uh, chapter 3 and 4, and Paul was talking about, at this time we're talking about the, the justification by faith, and how it, uh, Abraham was justified by faith, and how he believed in God, and God counted to him for righteousness. And, and through this, uh, that lesson and how that uh, Paul was trying to tell these people that the law has nothing to do with their salvation, but the only thing that the law has to do with pointing us to actually our sin, and that's it, and that's where it stops. And he was going back and, and looking at this in Abraham, how he was justified by the faith he had in God, and God counted him uh, for righteousness. And then through that, coming into today's lesson, Paul will show us the benefits that we have uh, through justification and the benefits through on how we have to be when we become Christians and the benefits that we can have from that. And, and, and I think there's not other a greater time in this time of what's going on with us today and, and what's going on around our world that we have a Sunday school lesson that talks about the benefits of salvation and the benefits of being justified uh, through Christ. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, take this Sunday school lesson. Some of you may have your, your lesson book. Some of them, uh, I think, will hopefully will turn to chapter 5 in your Bible. And this is going to be able to help you to be able to follow along with me a little bit better. The Sunday school lesson has a little bit different version of the verses that come out. So let's start and just look through the benefits of salvation, the benefits of being justified uh, through Christ. And Paul is going to point out a bunch of different things in these scripture verses, and I'm going to kind of bring these out as uh, we go through this lesson. And the lesson book talks, the title of the lesson book says, At Peace. And today, when I look at this through the day, are we at peace right now with God? Is this world at peace with God? And I'm going to have to say, no, it's not, because we have been scared by something that's come to us that we know nothing about. And fear has come upon us this day. So God, right now, through Paul and these lessons, wants you to understand that you can be at peace if you're in Christ Jesus. And the feel about that is, you know, we say here in verse 5, in verse 1 of chapter 5, as we begin to start, we're going to talk about the word peace. How can we have peace? The only way that we can have peace is through Jesus Christ. We have a lot of people out there today, I think, and I, I really think that what I'm going to say is true. But I know we have Christian people out there today that have probably played more in these last two or three weeks or months than they have in the last ten years. And what God is trying to show us in this today, He's trying to show us, He's trying to show His people we need to get in touch with Him. And in order to do that, in order to have that peace, we're going to have to get in touch with God. We're going to have to get in touch with a place somewhere that he left off and he wants us to come back to him and he wants us to have peace in a time 
of trouble. And, and Paul says he's therefore being justified by faith. He was talking about it in the last chapter. He said we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I hate to say this, but I have to say this. Even though this is live and it's out there, but if you are not a Christian, you do not have peace through Jesus Christ. I don't care what kind of religion that you're in to this day, you will not have peace unless you have peace in Christ Jesus. And we're fighting a battle today. We're fighting a battle of sin that's out there today. And we've got to be sure that we have our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ today and we'll get through this. But he's saying here that we have peace through him. And that's the act of the faith that we have in Christ Jesus there. And, and if you uh, don't have to turn, but if you look in John 14, he says here, he said, Peace, I leave with you my peace I've given to you. That as the world giveth, that the world don't give this, I give it unto you myself. And if you have trusted in Christ this day and time, you can claim this peace that Paul is trying to talk about right here and through this. And from that peace and from that justification that we have through faith, we look at verse 2 and he said, By whom also we have access by faith in the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now secondly, we have, we have an access to God. If you are a Christian today, you have an access to God through prayer. You have an access to go to God in all these troubled times that we have and, and to pray unto Him and to ask Him to, to comfort you and to keep you through these times of trouble. And I have to say, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you don't have this access to God. You don't have that. You cannot go to Him in these prayers. And what I would ask for you today, if you are not a Christian, whoever may be listening, if you're not a Christian and I know you're in trouble times right now, find you a neighbor somewhere. Find you a Christian neighbor and go to that Christian neighbor or call that Christian neighbor and ask them to pray for you. Ask them that they will pray that God will help you get through these situations. So Paul is telling us here that we have an access by that faith that we have in the grace of God. Nothing has happened through any of this thing that he's talking about here without the grace of God. Of causing this happen through the love that God has for us. He says that in this grace that we stand in, and we can rejoice in the hope of the glory in of God. And what we can see here is that glory that, that we have in God, you know, is, is even though we have and we live in troubled times and Titus is it looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, in that. And we're looking for that hope. We're looking for hope today in that I want to read you something from Brother McGee as we have talked about it and the things that we are, uh, we're in trouble with that's going on right now. A New York Times writer uh, back years ago from Washington made a statement. He said that, that in Washington said, there is a feeling that the problems have so mounted and multiplied that man is totally incapable of solving the problems of this world. And this guy made this mention this a long time ago. We're totally, we just cannot, there's no way in the world if we're capable of solving a problem of the world. We've got to look to God. We've got to look to Him and let Him work out that blessed hope in our lives. And, and He knows that all things that are going to work for the good of God. And, and, and we need proclaim that promise and as we go from that access and, and from the hope that, that uh, Paul is telling these people here that we have in the glory of God that we look to the troubled times in verse 4 that we go through he says not only so but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and he said in patience experience and experience hope if we've gone through tribulation to a Christian and we know Christ is our Savior we'll be justified by the faith that he's talking about, we can draw glory in our, in our tribulations because we know that God is there and we know that God is going to take care of us and we trust in Him with all our heart through those times and through that time. And when we've gone through these tribulations and we learn through that, it works patience in our heart because we know that God is there for us and He'll be here for you today. And He says in verse 4, in patience and experience, uh, that we have an experience of hope. We've all, somewhere along the line of the Christian, has experienced the hope that God has given us.
through our times of trouble and through our tribulation. And he said it takes trouble to bring out the best in the believer's life. Sometimes that happens in us. Sometimes it's taking the day on what things are going on, what's happening. Like I said a while ago, it takes trouble in our lives to bring out the best of us as Christians. And like I said a while ago, there's Christians out there that probably haven't prayed to God in a long, long, long time that right now are on their knees crying out to God, help us and help us and help us. Tribulation brings out the best in a believer's life. And he talks about it in verse 5 here. He talks about the love of God. And he said, the hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. And, and, and at this day and time as Christians, we are motivated, should be motivated to share Christ with people out there that feel like they're trouble and they feel like that they're hurting and they feel like that they're scared. And, and we shouldn't be ashamed to, to bring out that hope in God because the love of God sheds abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given to us. When we become Christians, God gives us the Holy Spirit that comes from Jesus Christ and, and it dwells up in our hearts. And this is what causes this, us to be able to do that. He talks about the Holy Spirit here in, in uh, verse 6. And he talks about uh, there that, that for we were yet without strength. And in due time Christ died for us. There at one time as, as lost people we were out, without strength. And if you're lost out there today, you're without strength because you don't have God to call on. And you don't know where to go and who to go to. The Holy Spirit is given to every believer. And not only some believers, but all believers in Christ. And God has given them that to us. We, can, we get that strength through Him and through the blood of Jesus. And He says, you know, without strength is it in due time Christ died for them godly. You know, at one time, and I have to say it myself, if you, before I became saved, before I become a Christian, I was ungodly. I was one of those ungodly people that He's talking about. And He doesn't mean that talking about ungodly that you're just a mean, cruel person. He means a sinner that hadn't come to Christ is ungodly. And if you're out there and you haven't come, you haven't come to Christ, you see, you're without strength. You're without strength. But Christ died for you. He died for these enemies. He died for the people today that, that talk about Him and says there is no God and all those people. He died for those type people. He died for those ungodly people and He demonstrated His love for us. And my friend, he says, the day that he gave his son to die for you, and he paid that penalty for that sin. He paid the penalty for that ungodly person that's out there today. And he says, for scarcely, in verse 7, for a righteous man would one die for pretty adventure. A good man uh, would, would even die himself. And you know that, that we, we love our family, and we love other people, and it, it could be a possible thing that we would die for our family. But when we look at that, <coughs> excuse me, when we look at that, it's easy sometimes to die for somebody that we love, but is it easy to die for somebody that you don't like? Is it easy to die for that person that you don't care for, that you've grown up over the years and disliked because of who he was and what he's done to you and different things like that? Would you die for him? But God, in verse 8, said, commendeth his love toward us that... When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't die for the good person. He died, he died for, the, for the sinner that's out there. And yet we were yet sinners. Christ died for all sinners. And God doesn't save us. He doesn't save us because of my love, but He saves us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Why? Because He did love us. And that's what that He did for us. And, and now by the grace, because the gift of sin has been removed by the death of Christ, He can hold out His arms and save you today. And what other time to look at this time of what's going on, to turn to Christ and to accept what He has to offer to you because there is going to come a time when eternity looks in our eyes and out there it will be. And, and one day we, if we don't know Him as Christ, if we don't know who He is, we're going to face the wrath of God one of these days. And I can say by the Word of God and by the truth of this Word that it will happen one of these days. In verse 9 he says, Much more than being justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. And what he's talking about here, he's talking about 
the time and the, and the end of the tribulation times. If we don't know Christ and, and we're not saved by the blood of Jesus, Jesus, we're going to face that wrath of God. Listen, people, we haven't faced the wrath of God today yet. We face judgment of God today. God has judged us on a lot of things, and I think He's judging our country today, and I think what's going on today is a wake-up call for us to turn back to God. But we haven't seen His wrath yet. But you will see His wrath in the time to come. And, and He's talking about here, He said, we'll be saved from the wrath through Him. And He's talking about here, He says he, today that we have been saved by the power of sin, and He's going to save us from the future presence of sin, but what's going on right now. And He also will save us from the wrath of sin when time comes and this time of earth is over. So if you're not in that category, please listen to what the Word of God says to you and come and understand that you need to be saved and become uh, saved from that wrath through what's going to happen. It says in verse 10, he said, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, He should be that shall be saved by his life. He's saying here, when we were the enemies of when we were the sinners, he's talking about how we were reconciled to God by the death of Christ on the cross, and we we're reconciled, uh, reconciled to him, uh, shall be saved by his life because Christ rose from the grave, and now he's standing at the right hand of the Father, and this is how that now as our life becomes over, that we spend eternity with him because he is alive. He overcame sin. He overcame death. And He's alive today. And we're saved by His life. And from the end of that point, from all that we talk about, the peace that we should have and, and in this lesson and, and that the access that we have to God and the hope that we have in Christ through, through faith in Him and the, tri the triumph and the troubles that we go through each day and from the love of God <coughs> that He has given to us this day, we can have joy. We can look to Christ today, even though the circumstances don't look too good right now. We can look to Christ today and have joy in our hearts because He said not only so, but we also joy in God through our, our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. We have received the atonement through Christ as Christians today. We have received, our, the, our sin has been taken away and He's put it on Him at the cross. And we can have joy through that hope that one day when we do die, that we can see Him in heaven and spend eternity in Him. And He said, if you can't rejoice that He lives and that He is who He is, you can't rejoice because He has provided the salvation for us and He is willing to save us sinners and bring us into the presence of Himself one day. Thank you and I appreciate uh, the ones that will uh, tune into this. I pray that this lesson has been a, a heartfelt to you and has helped you to grow closer to the Lord this day and time and to look to Him for more peace.